Heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy, otherwise known as HIPEC, has revolutionized the way we look at and treat stage four advanced abdominal malignancies. Those malignancies include uh, appendiceal cancers, pseudomyxoma peritoneal, colon cancers, gastric cancers, low-grade sarcomas, certain ovarian ca cancers, as well as peritoneal mesothelioma. Previously, a, a diagnosis uh, of stage four disease was considered to be a, a, a death sentence for patients with very low survivals. This new type of therapy has revolutionized the way uh, we treat and look at this disease. Heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy yeah. is applied in the setting of cytoreductive surgery. Cytoreductive surgery is employed to remove all visible tumor within the abdomen and the pelvis. Um, what remains are cells that are not visible to the surgeon. Heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy will kill the cells that remain in the abdomen at high concentrations, far higher than what we can deliver systemically to the patients. And patients, uh, patients also will not experience the same side effects. This is a regional delivery of cancer cells. The heat in and of itself is cytotoxic to cancer cells. It causes programmed cell death. It increases penetrance of the, the chemotherapy into the cancer cells. It can target the cancer cells as well as cause cytoskeletal destabilization of the cancer cells. It offers an additional benefit to the chemotherapy itself. When I was training a number of years ago, we would, when, when we were confronted with these patients in the operating room, these patients would be would would, would have an abdominal exp abdominal pelvic expiration, and then would be closed, with the thought that nothing else could be done. Now the treatment paradigm, the the way we look at uh, look at this has has remarkably changed. These patients pre present, depending upon the burden of disease that they may have, with a a, a sort of broad spectrum of symptoms. Some patients may be symptom asymptomatic, other patients may have such a large burden of disease where bowel obstruction, pain, ascites, um, inability to breathe. The operations are very long. They could, it all depends upon the volume of the disease the patient has. These operations can be from six hours, they can go as, they can be to as long as 14 or even more, even more so. We remove the tumors in the abdomen, in the patient's abdomen. Usually it's a multidisciplinary approach with myself and other surgeons. And after removing all the cancer cells, all the, all the tumor, all the, all the visible tumor, so essentially we close the abdomen during the procedure and we circulate a heated chemotherapy at temperatures of four, between 42 and 44 degrees Celsius over a, over a 90 to 100 minute period of time. There's very limited cytotoxicity that we're finding to other non-cancer bearing tissues. It, it appears that the cancer cells are targeted and the normal cell and the normal tissues seem, appear to be spared. This is all evidence-based medicine. This is a, a protocol, a, a, a treatment approach which was developed by the National Cancer Institute in there in early 19, uh, ni in, the, in, the, in the 1990s. And it's now through basic science translational studies and outcomes analysis. So data has matured to a point where we're seeing now uh, real benefits to patients. For example, colon cancers where median where, where survivals were less than six months we're seeing median survivals of 60 percent at two years up to 45 percent at five years there's other diseases that this benefits as well pseudomyxoma peritonite we, we, we see survivals in excess of 10 years or more this is revel this is again this has revolutionized the way we view stage four advanced abdominal malignancies This is not looked upon as a cure. This is looked upon as a way of changing the natural history of the disease. And in certain selected patients, this can provide a, a remarkable benefit. And in, and in certain circumstances, it could provide a cure. This is not for everybody. This is for patients who have to be very physically fit. They, it does age is, 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 is not an exclusion criteria. If you're, if you're, we've done these operations on, on patients who are in their 70s and 80s, but they have to be very physically fit. Um, and they have to have a, a, a certain type of tumor 
a certain type of cancer as well as a certain volume of disease that we can safely remove in the operating room. The chemotherapy is not effective when we leave if large tumor cells or uh, large tumors are left behind. These are long operations. They can take six hours, they can take uh, longer operations. Patients have to uh, be able to tolerate a uh, procedure of this magnitude. This is a very large procedure. It takes time to do and it takes time to recover. Patients are generally in the hospital for seven days to two weeks and they take a, need a period of time to recover thereafter. But after recovering from this procedure, the recovery is, the, the, the quality of life is no different between other, uh, this procedure and other major abdominal malignancies. Um, we have had patients who have been told that they, need, they would have to need to go to a hospice, who are now back at work, highly functioning individuals. It's, it's really offered a new lease on life. It's all uh, tumor dependent, but the majority of our patients will receive some form of, of systemic therapy or targeted biological therapy after. Again, this is a procedure which is an, ad, which an, which is an adjunct, does not replace chemotherapy and other, other, other targeted approaches, but it, 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 it works in, in, in synchrony with the other existing therapy.